Yeah, hi folks. Now today I'm just going to post Winston Peters' first speech in Parliament from a couple of days ago because it was great. He ripped them all apart, including Hipkins, the Maori Party and Willie Jackson and the Greens, or should I call them the Hamas supporters. And he ripped into the media as well. But the one thing that really stood out for me was the fact that Luxon really seemed to enjoy every bit of it. I call the uh, Right Honourable Deputy Prime Minister Winston Peters. Uh, Mr Speaker, right here, right now, something that the political experts said could never happen is happening. And so congratulations to you <laughs> for your position. <laughs> uh, and also congratulations to Chris Luxon and David Seymour in the formation of this government and their political parties, something that also the experts said could not happen. And so if we're going forward, can we just have a look in the future at these experts and start examining their record of being right? And because so many times they have been wrong. Can I say also that uh, hearing Mr. Hipkins today was actually an astonishing event. This is somebody that came to power and had his own bonfire. Bonfire of the stupid vanities that his party had in place. But then today he came along and defended it. And the extraordinary thing is, he didn't seem to understand that the forward forecast for GDP for next year by the IMF has us at 159 in the world, just in front of Equatorial Guinea, and doing less than 1% in terms of GDP. And he said that that was a success story. Well, you can see why they are so troubled now in such small numbers. Congratulations to every member of parliament that's here, from whatever the party they might be, and for the time you're here, uh, because it's a very privileged place to be, and we're all here to do one thing. Despite what some of your leaders or your manifesto might say, might, and what they, uh, your past colleagues might say, you're here to represent everybody as one people called New Zealanders. Regardless of our DNA, our gender, our background, or our creeds. We, this country was made being one country, or as uh, Dame Finna Cooper said, we signed the treaty so that we could become one people. And I want to remind some people in posing here, here yesterday, posing here yesterday, as though they're the new vision, they're the new light, that they're the epiphany of what Maori is. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. Let me, let me tell you, if you're looking for trouble, you've come to the right place. We came back to Parliament doing the impossible. Right? Yes, you're, yes, you're true, it's true. But let me tell you, let me tell you two things. You're heading for 54 years if you're in the Greens and never having been in Cabinet if your party was formed in the first contest in 1972 under the name Values. 54 years never being in Cabinet is a long time to wait. Even Moses' people, even Moses only 40 years and his people made it. For 54 years, and the Green Party is never going to make it back at all, and nor is the party Māori. And I'll tell you why it is. Because you're heading straight to the bottom pile, claiming to be what you're not, the voice of Māori. Uh-uh, no you're not. And never will be. And certainly not someone who is so decolonised, he wears a cowboy hat. <laughs> so decolonised, he wears a cowboy hat. Isn't that amazing? Every pretension... Every pretension he's got can be found out in five seconds flat. And whilst we're at it, the $350,000 that came from a charity, why on earth did the, Labor, did the Party Māori get that money? 3,500 3, charity money to Party Māori. And what is going on when that can be allowed to survive in this country's democracy? Oh, yeah. Not too happy now. Well... There'll be somebody knocking soon, believe me. And the same law will apply to them as applies to every other political party. Now, can I just say this? We survived the last uh, campaign, having been marginalised, cinderellaised, demonised by too many who were in the Public Interest Journalism Fund, paid off in the media. 
but we're back. No, 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 no. We want a democracy where there is the fourth estate. Don't check. Don't honest. Like honest. Oh, no, no, somebody else didn't like the mother, did he? He was threatening somebody on TV, if you please. Of course, he wasn't a band according to the way the funds should be operating, according to Willie, the Minister of Broadcasting. That was the most embarrassing in circumstance. Now, the bill is, is, yes, I do like journalists. I like journalists who understand that it's a profession and that they are critical to any democracy. But I do not like fifth columnists. I don't like people, I don't like people, for example, to go out and have politically motivated commentary day in, day out. It, it reeks, their questions reek of their preference. They're not professionals. They're not professionals. Well, I can see why Mr. Jackson wouldn't understand, because Mr. Jackson has been the key voice in the Labour Party these last six years, and he sent them to their demise. He's their, he's their Maori leader. He's their Maori leader, and there's one left now in the Maori seats. Oh, and by the way, to Party Maori, only one party has ever taken all the Maori seats off Labour, and you're looking at it. Only one party has ever done that. You know, before the 2020 election, New Zealand First was attacked by the Serious Ford Office. It's April in 2020. We're on about four and a half, five, almost five percent, and we're attacked by the SFO. And then the media, relentlessly as a organisation, went after New Zealand First. And one outlet, no fewer, and publicly owned it was too, no fewer than 27 times attacked us. Yet when we beat the SFO. When we beat the Serious Board Office, not once, but twice, before the election and after it, and put out a press statement about our rights, the rights of the victor in this case, they never printed a word. Yeah, yeah. They claim to be balanced. Never printed a word. And after hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of personal cost and expense, they expect me to forgive them and go back to treating them like the way they should be treated. When they understand no, Radio Wattier didn't do that. You're quite right. Radio Wattier didn't do that because of the guy called Dale Husband that understands fairness. He's one of those guys that despite his colleagues, he's professional. Despite people like Willie Jackson, he remains professional. And I salute that. And that's why I go on this show every second week, like the farming show. All those that talk to us will get to talk to us after the election. But those newfound that turn up the day after, or they did the day before the election, this is true. I was on there two turned up the day before the election, journalist, and wanted to interview me. And I said, well, is there any chance of any boat being, being uh, affected by your comment? No. So what the age are you doing here then? That's what they thought was fair. And then all of a sudden now, they want Chris Luxon to rule Winston Peters out. He's misbehaving himself. Oh, no, I'm not. I believe in democracy and I believe in the media. And I want to see them back to doing what they should do and not becoming an unelected political party in this country sitting up there. Yeah, yeah. Sack, That's all I want. Sack, <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, look, can I say that we're out there packing the halls in Tauranga. We got uh, 400, we got 750 in Tauranga, not one journalist there. Then we're on to places like Dunedin, Papa Moore, Dargaville, Invercargill, Hawke's Bay, Kaikoura, Nelson. Everywhere we're packing the halls and no journalists at all. Do you think that's commentary? Do you think that's fair? Oh, they say, we sent somebody. No, you didn't. I can show you the meeting after meeting after meeting where they wouldn't give us any coverage whatsoever. Oh, no. Unlike that, unlike that member, she couldn't fill a telephone booth. But we packed the halls. Not enough chairs or anything. And my point is, why were they gaslighting us out of the campaign? This is not what a democracy looks like. And whether people agree or not, they're entitled to hear, as Phil Collins sang, they're entitled to hear both sides of the story. Not one side, both sides of the story. And here's what he's trying to defend them now. He knows in his heart of heart, as he goes from this job very shortly. And he will. Oh, no. They're calling it. Look, when democracy, when, when, you, when you're in a game and in the end they look around and say, who's responsible? And you think to yourself, maybe it's the guy I'm looking at in the mirror then the time staying here, Willie, is not going to work for you. And the sooner you go, the better, so that somebody can step up and start to rebuild what was once a great party, but has forgotten the workers. They wouldn't know a worker if he fell over one. Totally forgotten the working people.
of this country. Ladies and gentlemen, we got back because we went to the social media. And we didn't use any boosters at all, but we knew out there, at least unfiltered and unedited, we could get our story away. But had we got a decent go, we'd be sitting here with far more than the members we got now. Yeah. And that's a fact. Why, the Greens never had a meeting. They never had a meeting. They go down to the, to the, uh, uh, the, to the beach, get a few starfish, and they're headlining a six o'clock news. Yeah. What was political about that? Pray tell me you're from the journalist, you're a media person. What was political about that? Unbelievable. Deafening. And they never had any public meetings anywhere in the whole campaign, and there they are sitting there. But I'll tell you what, Mr. Collins, this is the high point. It's going down now. <laughs> I've been around. I've been around a long time. I know a bunch of losers when I see them. Any money you like, <laughs> you're going that way. Of course, these people, these people want their seat back. And they're better organised, and there will be when the time comes. So enjoy the next three years. Try to do the best you can, but it won't be long. Ladies and gentlemen, can I just say to those in the media who wrote us off and relentlessly attacked us, guess what? New Zealand First is back. Yeah. 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 Now, I know Willie's charmed by this because Willie came to a speech where he was giving me a farewell speech that was put on by FOMA, Federation of Maori Authorities, in case people think Maori authorities don't understand how much we've done for them over the years. And Willie gave my farewell speech, and I said to him, Willie, you're being premature. Anybody who even dreams is young first is, anybody even dreams is young first is going to get beaten should wake up and apologise. So, Willie, wake up and apologise now. Another example, well actually, well actually Willie, having spanned six decades, I can give you a few examples. If you know anybody else has, right? But see, I respect the, the people that you should respect, like for example, Nata, and Pumari, yeah. and Buck, yeah. and Carol. These are political geniuses. Their view of the Treaty of Waitangi is written in the book 101 years ago by Nata himself. Not by these people over here, making up as they dream it up at some social logic class at university. It's balderdash. Oh no, you can wave and do all the hungry and put the hoo your feather in your hair, but it doesn't belong there. Ask Radner. Ask the man himself. What's the hoo your feather doing in your head? No, no, the immodesty knows no bounds. But I've got to tell you, I'm pleased New Zealand First is back and not a day too soon. Because this sort of humbug is going to stop. Yeah. And we're going to go back to calling. We're going to go back to calling our country New Zealand. We're not going to have a French Polynesian name. That's an insult to everybody in the South Island. And there's a South Island member of Parliament for Te Pāti Māori, and he can't even defend his his people's name for that part of the country. Yeah. Tawai Po Nam is the name. Why? It ain't Aotearoa. Oh, but he's too mute. He's too mute, too new, and too unlearned to even make a defence of it. Didn't got to think that. Did Paul Murray think that? This genius called Buck, who ended up as a major anthropologist, a doctor first, an anthropologist all the way to Hawaii, did he think that? No. He's my authority. What's yours? What's your authority? They haven't got one. And so no more of this darn humbug. And you can put the tar walker on and dance around and carry on in the way that we find very strange, because where I come from, that's conferred upon you. You don't just start paint yourself like some tattoo shop. <laughs> tattoo That's shop. That's what they're doing. <laughs> and I saw yesterday to walk into this place and take over the traditions of a great democracy that's been going since 1854. One of the great democracies in the world. Oh, Willie thought it was, Willie thought it was wonderful. No consultation. No. Here comes Johnny come lately. Or in this case, Ra would he come lately. And he's going to design the whole thing new. I got news for you, sunshine, and it's all bad. We got news to you, and it's all bad. We're not putting up with it. And some of us have done far more for Maori than you'll ever do. That's a fact. Who settled this? Who settled the Central North Island tribes' 14 Iwi settlement? Who settled that? Right? The Maori wardens. Who's, who gave them the start? The Maori Women's Welfare League. Mount Hikurangi. I could be here all day, what we've done for Maori. Not like these people, all talk and no action. All talk and no action. And we're not coming back. We're not coming back here to listen to we're not coming back to listen to this humbug any longer. We want this country 
to be called New Zealand. And if we're going to change the name, then we're going to ask all New Zealanders first. We're not going to have a little bunch of minority who say we're the Maori voice. Okay, so if they're the Maori voice and they've got only 3% of the vote most of the time, and yet they say the Maori people are 80% of the population, it means that one sixth of the Maori people might support them and five sixths don't. How can they call themselves the Maori voice? And why does Willie sit by mutually allowing, mutually allowing them to do that? But we knew from the word go that when these people arrived, that there's going to be a, a, a race to the bottom between Te Party Maori and the Maori members of the Labour Party. And that's tragedy. It's tragic. Because at the end of the day, what we get from that is not what people want out in the Maori world. You know what they want? They want an affordable house. They want, if they feel sick, hopefully not them, their parents or their children, to get treatment medically as soon as they possibly can. And they want to get on the S letters that takes you with education as far as you want to go. And the fourth thing Maori want is first world wages. These people never even talk about that at all. No, it's all their highfalutin, Auckland University Sociology Department claptrap. <laughs> Making up as they go along. And the moment you challenge their authority, they start shouting out the easiest cowardice answer, racist. Oh, no, we're not. No, no, as the founder of, uh, of the Congo Royal said, Winston is not anti-Maori, he's just anti-nonsense. Oh, Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Remember her name? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tana said that, didn't she? Oh. And, uh, and also, uh, somebody's mother said that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> somebody's mother said that too. And I wish he was as bright as his mother and pay more attention. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, your mother was a very bright woman. <laughs> and she had high hopes for this party. And he's here the first. And, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the son is going his own way and thinks he's smarter than mum. Oh, no, he's not. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I was going to make a lot of statements today, but the reality is we're out to turn, we're out to turn this country around. This, this was an inflection election. Make no bones about it. If we had not got back these three parties, we were heading off to be Venezuela. Venezuela. Or Myanmar. Cuba. Oh, yeah, they're there clapping at the back. That's what they want. Clearly with no idea that it was once the most successful economy in South America. And look at the cot case it is today. Those sorts of policies took them there. Same with Myanmar. Under Burma, the most successful economy in Asia. And look what sort of policies took them there. We just got back in time, and we're proud to join this coalition to save this country.